Newtonian determinism says that the universe is a clock, a gigantic clock that's wound up at the beginning of time, and it's been ticking ever since according to Newton's laws of motion. So, what you're going to eat 10 years from now, on January 1st, has already been fixed. It's already known using Newton's laws of motion. Einstein believed in that. Einstein was a determinist. Well, does that mean that a murderer, this a horrible mass murderer, isn't really guilty of his works because it was already preordained billions of years ago. And Einstein said, well, yeah, in some sense that's true. Even mass murderers were predetermined. But he said, they should still be placed in jail. Heisenberg then comes along and proposes the Heisenberg uncertainty principle and says, nonsense. There's uncertainty. You don't know where the electron is. It could be here, here, or many places simultaneously. This, of course, Einstein hated because he said God doesn't play dice with the universe. Well, hey, get used to it. Einstein was wrong. God does play dice. Every time we look at an electron, it moves. There's uncertainty with regards to the position of the electron. So what does that mean for free will? It means in some sense we do have some kind of free will. No one can determine your future events given your past history. There's always the wild card. There's always the possibility of uncertainty in whatever we do. Scientists first conducted this experiment a century ago, firing photons of light through a metal plate with two slits. The light that went through the holes hit a screen behind the plate. I'm going to demonstrate the results of this amazing experiment with a bunch of baseballs and a barrier that we've set up which has two holes in it. Now normally in the everyday world, if I throw baseballs through one hole or the other, they'll form a predictable pattern on a screen that we've set up behind home plate. They'll be in one place or the other. Now let's make that pattern with a whole bunch of baseballs. I'm going to use this pitching machine. Here's the first one. Let's see what happens. Now you see, the balls landed on the screen in two bunches, pretty much along a direct line from each of the two holes. That's natural. That's what we expect. But when we descend into the microscopic universe and use electrons, which are 10 trillion times smaller than baseballs, we get a very different, odd result when we perform this experiment. A pattern that you would expect if these were waves going through both holes at the same time and interfering with themselves. Well, we usually think of electrons as being particles. So how can they exhibit wave-like properties. These test results were confounding. The electron was a particle before it was fired at the screen, yet it formed a pattern on the screen as if this single electron had gone through both holes at the same time. Does a microscopic particle spontaneously clone itself in midair? After years of study, scientists still don't know exactly what's happening. Probably the most magical thing is that in quantum physics, an object can be in more than one place at the same time. To try to grasp this amazing experimental result, scientists decided to observe how individual electrons behaved when they went through the double slit. How exactly could a particle go through both holes at the same time? Scientists got a front row seat to observe the strange behavior of these electrons or other subatomic particles or even photons of light. Doesn't really matter as long as they're small. They didn't just look at where they landed on the screen back there. They also watched the behavior of the particles as they went through the holes. And then they saw something amazing. When scientists were watching the holes, the electrons behaved like particles, forming the baseball-like pattern on the screen back there. But when the scientists weren't watching, then the electrons behaved like waves. 
they formed a pattern that looked like the interference pattern produced by waves on a screen. That's really strange. What you see depends on whether you're watching or not. If you're watching, you see the particle-like behavior, like baseballs. If you're not watching, you see a wave-like behavior, but not both at the same time. This was nothing less than astounding. Observation seems to change the nature of subatomic particles. In recent years, technology has allowed scientists to perform a fascinating variation of the test. Its results call into question our perception of time itself. This is like a high-tech version of the double hole experiment. Electrons are being fired toward a barrier with two holes in it. But the scientists can delay their decision about whether to observe the electrons until after they've passed through the holes, but before they hit the screen. It's as though I'm on a baseball field, and there's a baseball being pitched toward the barrier with the holes in it. But my eyes are closed, so it goes through, and it behaves like a wave, but then, at the last second before it hits the screen, I open my eyes and decide to observe it. At that moment, the electrons, in essence, become particles, and seemingly always were particles from the time they left the electron gun. So it's as though they went back in time to before they went through the holes and decided to go through one or the other, not through both as they would have had they been behaving like waves. That's really crazy. That's the enigma. That our choice of what experiment to do determines the prior state of the electron. Somehow or other, we've had an influence on it which appears to travel backwards in time.